But away from that, let's talk about the drains. And my colleague, Benjamin Kako, has been spending time at Aveno suburb here in Accra to understand the situation, you know, how prepared residents are, what their worries are ahead of the rains. What you see behind me is the initial stages or are the initial stages of what is supposed to be a culvert and this is supposed to link the area from ECG behind all those uh, well drains from there link it pass through this end right into the Odo uh, river the, the main uh, storm drain at the far end uh, the fear of members of the community is that once this remains covered it's going to get filled with sand because as you can see it's not just water it's a lot of uh, sand and other waste as well that is being well taken out bit by bit uh, here but that is the fear of community members let's engage some of them for their take on this is this culvert the 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 solution to your problems when it comes to flooding in this community. This culvert will be completed in two months. Is it going to be the solution? Partially, it will. But uh, we are looking at particles of sands that will be collected in the waters that will flow through the drain. If, let's say, the water subsides, what happens with the, uh, the sediments? It settles. So sooner it will be growing, it will be coming up. Who gets in there and gets the sun out of that? That is the fear of the people. Because as we look at the old drain, which has been abandoned and the new one being constructed, that's what happened. Because we never thought that there will be, you know, a time when water cannot go through that drain. It was big as this one. And this one, this one, though this one is bigger, we thought water will flow easily. But we are humans. When we look at our back there, the water will just enter it from an, an open drain. Yes. So if the water from that open drain carries a car tie, it just gets stuck inside the drain. You know, this long stretch of covered drain. Who goes in there to take it? Then small, small time, the whole place will be choked again. So we have, we'll come back to square one. Nothing happens, you know. And, but the other side of it, the other side of it is that the, the school is coming back. For sure. We know the school is coming back because people are working on it to get the school back. The children will be there. Assuming we have an open drain, where will the children play? That's where we are also looking at. So we are weighing the pros and cons of the drain that has been constructed. Do we leave it open or do we cover it? But how do we take care of the sediments or whatever the part, the waste that will go through the, uh, the drain? What do you think? Should it be covered or left open? Now it has been covered. You know, we cannot advise the government to do because I hear it's the project of government. So if government is doing it, were we consulted? No. They be believe that because there are experts there who think in their wisdom it needs to be covered. But look at the other drain which has not been covered. How often do we see silt in the drain. They have to use a whole lot of money to desilt the drain. What about this one? You see that thing? So partially, they will not solve the problem. We will come back again in a few years time, the whole place getting choked and the place will get flooded again. Let's see, you know, concrete, you know, holistic approach to solving the problem. Which we thought that if they are going to uh, rebuild the school, you know, the walls of the drain have to go up. You see that thing? We'll go up. And the school walls are fenced 
you know, the school buildings are fenced so that you know, the children cannot get access to the drain. You see that thing? So we believe that if this drain are, you know, will not be covered, but you know, the school wall will be raised in such a way that the children cannot get access to the drain. So that you say the children will fall into the drain. You get it? Yes. So that we will have the time, we will have the resource, you know, to distill waste from the drain. And the place would be devoid of flats. We have another community member. Hello, what's your name? I'm Manford. Manford? Yeah. How long have you been in this community? Oh, since I was born. I was born here. So I've been here for almost 38 years now. Almost 38 years yeah. you've been here. Yeah. What do you think about the sanitation problem, and especially here, at this crucial point, the culvert that is being built? What is your take? My mind is, uh, can do a gutter. Look at this gutter here. The small one coming from this side. It's not covered. So it's easy for us to, when uh, the rubbish gets inside, it's easy for us for so that we can remove it. But now you have covered it. So how can you remove the rubbish from inside? But, but if it's covered, it also pre prevents people from, I mean, some of the things that would fall into it w would not be able to do that. But you see, rubbish and sand will enter into it. Look at the Odo River. It gets full and people come to remove it. Do you understand? So it's the same thing as this one. When it gets choked, how can you remove the things from inside? How can you remove the excess, the waste materials and things from inside? You can't do anything about it. So they say when it rains every now, the rain will pass by the gutter and get an enter into people's room. So, so in other words, this is not the sort of uh, solution that you wanted in the no, community. No, 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 no. Th this is not what you were looking for? No, no, I was not looking for this. We're looking for something extraordinary than to cover it. You can do the gutter, but don't cover it. You see, so that when the case, it happens that it is choked, you can organize community labor, then we all get into it and remove it. It has, it has happened here before, where you took that shot there. We enter there to move the sands and everything from this side. We can go inside and come out. So it's the same thing can happen to this one. You understand? The day is assemblyman for this area, and while the sun is burning us, there are burning issues to be addressed. Uh, Alfred, thank you very much for joining us. What are some of the major issues affecting this community? The major issue affecting the community has to do with drains and the school. And the biggest priority is the Abino school. Uh, for more than a decade now, the whole school that we have in the community, uh, it was a dilapidated structure and the entire place was also flooded. Anytime it rained, the entire place get flooded. So GES has to re relocate all the uh, uh, students to Ajani schools. And as I'm talking to you now, for the past 10 years, the place has even been encroached upon and we don't have school in the community. So these, those are the biggest priorities that we are facing in the community. All right, we'll be talking about the schools, but I want you to start from the standpoint of sanitation. Now, we saw that huge drain, you know, right when you are entering uh, from the circle area into, into uh, Aveno. How bad is the situation when it comes to, you know, the, the, the drainage systems in Aveno? Okay, uh, the drain system, I say, is very bad. But uh, calling a spade a spade, uh, we have the storm drain, that, as, we can say, as we call it, the other drain. Proud to that, we don't have any secondary drains in the community some years ago. But let me give, uh, use this opportunity to thank global communities. Uh, they con they've considered secondary drains in the community. They had the first uh, phase, the second phase. What is left to be done now is the third phase, which for many, you know, it has to do with funding, which the NGO did their best. They were able to collect some. So most of the secondary, I, I would say, virtually all the, uh, uh, the second drains you can see in the community were constructed by uh, global communities. So it's left with the, uh, the third phase, which is affecting this part of the community. We call the place Kwajuma. We did it at Tatin and Mamumu, but the final, uh, or the, uh, the third phase is supposed to be as well we are seeing, and that hasn't been constructed. And it has also even affected the school as we are seeing. So the situation in the community is very, 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 very bad. 
but generally, when you look at the sanitation in the, the community, I, I, I feel that may be a contributory factor because the sort of rubbish that we've seen even in the drain points to the fact that maybe sanitation in the community is also not being taken seriously. Yes. What, what is your take on that? Yes, yes, you are perfectly right. Uh, as you know, sanitation is a general issue confronting the entire nation and have you know cannot be left out if you can see most of the drains are also open so sometimes it's not even maybe somebody uh, uh, dumping rubbish into it some it's an open drain and so you know there are a lot of rubbish around which gets stuck inside at the end of the day we try our best to organize sanitation issues uh, sanitation uh, uh, cleanup in the community most of the time but i think there's more that need to be do uh, need to be done in the community and also let me use this opportunity to also to to also uh, 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 advise the community members that we uh, sanitation is a, a collective responsibility. Uh, you can see most of this, uh, we have some stores around. You are responsible for, for your frontage. And uh, this is where the AMA sanitation bylaws uh, must work, which uh, for some time AMA has been even prosecuting some people. So there's uh, more that needs to be done. Even though as an assembly mind and commitment, we are also doing our best. I believe that there's still more room for improvements for the uh, sanitation issues. Let me quickly ask you, do you have problems with open defecation in this community? Yes, 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 we, we, we have it, we have it, we have it. But I can say for a fact that it has, uh, we, uh, it has reduced a little in the community. Uh, first, in the, maybe in the scorching afternoon, you see some people defecating around, but we organize a series of community debates with some, uh, 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 some celebrities. Akoso Japan was even part there. We, we gave a, a strong caution to the entire community members. Some people were even arrested, sent to the sanitation but you know, uh, some people Nicodem mostly in the evening. You don't see them in the in the in the in the, in the afternoon, but in the evening, uh, you see them uh, most at the drains. Difficult. Sometimes when we get them, we we'll, we we'll, we'll deal with them. But uh, as I said, there's still more room for improvement in the community so far as open defecation is concerned. So that also tells me clearly that there is a lack of toilet facilities in this community and maybe there are water problems as well. Uh, do confirm. Uh, I will not say we have issues with toilets in the community. For that one, why am I saying that? Uh, some years ago, we were having just one community uh, toilet in the community, uh, like communal toilet. How long ago? Oh, about 2000 and, uh, by 2006. I'm at 2006, seven. We are just having one public toilet in the community. So that one, maybe you can quote unquote justify what some people will be defecating around. But the NGO came into the community, we were able to put up some also toilet facility for some, which they are supposed to maintain. That one, so it has not been maintained. And AMA is having a facility for this gamma project in the community. Gamma project in the community. And we have a lot of uh, 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 communal toilet around. So you must not justify that there are no uh, 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 toilets in the community, communal toilets in the community that you go and defecate openly. But, I, but, 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 it, but if you, you know, I've just taken a look at, just look behind you, look around here. The population is huge. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think, how many communal, you know, public toilet systems do you have now? Do you think it suffices to cater for the, the, the large numbers in this. We have about five community uh, toilets around in the community. And the household, there are some individuals that also have toilets in their, in their house. But you see, this boy down to the fire, I said, I don't want us to justify somebody practicing open defecation because you don't have toilets in your house. Because the government, eh, through AMA, through NGOs, made available for people to own their own toilets in their respective homes. It also comes with its own challenge. You know, Aveno is a, 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 it's an old town. Okay? So sometimes, maybe in the house, even though there are AMA bylaws for people to uh, have toilets in their homes. At the end of the day, maybe the person who put up the 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 the, uh, the, the, the owner of the of the house is even dead. Uh, share the house to the the family members. At the end of the day, the question is nobody is willing to even give his uh, a portion for it to be converted into uh, 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 household toilet facility. But that knows that there are some people who are even having it in the community. So me, to me, my issue is still that you must not justify open defecation because you don't have one in the house. Because arrangement was made for you to own one if you really want one. So to me, it's a matter of just arresting people 
prosecuting people for them to do the right thing. We're at one of the drains here in Aveno, and it is a sad situation indeed. In fact, you know that with a community with poor drainage systems, there can only be one end when the rains pelt, flooding. And that is why I'm going to get interactive with Oscar Tego, who actually is a community leader and an advisor to the chief of Aveno. Oscar Tego, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Great. Thank you. How bad is the flooding situation in Aveno? It's very a serious problem, you know. Aveno has a very serious situation when rain comes. And we thank God that this very year there hasn't been much rain here to cause floods. Now, the rains are already upon us. I mean, we've seen a few showers here and there. What is the feeling like in Aveno? Are, are you dreading what will happen when the rains hit? We, we are very afraid that when the rain comes heavily like it used to be in the past, you know, we have to leave the community. People have to leave the community because, you know, the whole place will be get flooded because of the poor drainage system. So you, you speak of the past. Tell us of some of the things that have happened in this community. Uh, have you lost human lives? Have people lost property? Paint a picture for us. Previously, yes, people have lost their properties. You know, their buildings have collapsed under the floods. And uh, you know, people's, you know, a whole lot of things happened during the previous ones. And for which we are afraid that if the rain comes now, it will be a disaster. It will be a disaster, you say. Uh, we have the major storm drain yeah. uh, up ahead. Is it not able to contain the floodwaters to wash them uh, onwards? The storm drain is not a problem. It's by itself. No. One, the tributaries to the drain might be the cause. One, let's look at the electricity area there. The drains there are so choked that the, rain, the water cannot flow through the drain. It overflows, and if it overflows, it crosses the railway line into the community because the drains, part of the drains are broken down and it cannot contain the waters in the drain and it has to get into the community. Now, I also know that from, from you know, interactions with all of you that community members are also culpable through the dumping, indiscriminate dumping of refuse. How much of a problem is that? What has been achieved in stopping people from dumping indiscriminately? We've done a lot, a lot. Because the last time I remember, uh, people used to dump uh, waste into the drain. We arrest them to the sanitation court. You know, recently about 12 people were defecating in the drain and they were arrested and prosecuted and you know some were sentenced some were fined and we thought that this would be a lesson to all of them but once in a while in the night you see people defecating in the drains and that you know would definitely cause a choke and the place would be flooded and two the engineering work of some of the drains you know is much to be desired from the secondary drains that are there before, you know, right into the storm drain. They are at right angles. So the pressure in the drain will force the water from the, uh, the secondary drain back into the community. But it were to flow at an angle to the, water, to the storm waters, it will just pull those waters along. This, we think it was an, an engineering defect which needs to be corrected because when we were doing the NGO work, we spotted about five different places that causes floods in the community. And we have tried as much as possible to get those things addressed. But lo and behold, nothing has been done about it. And still there are floods in the system. Now, you speak about interacting with some people to help find a solution. Uh, I just interacted with Mr. Jay, the Assemblyman. Uh, the Member of Parliament now is Daquan Newman. What have been the interactions with these people in leadership to help, you know, alleviate the problem? I remember very well during the campaign time, you know, we met, uh, at that time, he was a candidate. Yes, I told her that what I have as an NGO 
uh, committee chairman is the same as she has got. And the only difference is the terminal, you no, know, the bus terminal at the junction there. You know, that's the only difference that she hasn't got on her you know, itinerary. So we were thinking that, you know, by now there must be something on the ground that, you know, you will meet uh, the community members, that is community engagement, to see what really are the problems, as she has done it, you know, theoretically on paper, so that uh, practically you will come and we all come together, then we try to find solutions to some of these problems, particularly the flats in the community. Now it's been some five, six months into the year uh, since the 2020 elections. Have you seen any signs from any form of leadership, especially from the standpoint of the Member of Parliament, while she is not an uh, agent of development technically, yeah. have you seen any signs that point to the fact that the things you discussed with her could materialize to, to stem the tide of these problems? No. I've been trying to, you know, <laughs> get in touch with her through uh, their agents or their party leaders or whatever they are in the community so that you know, they relay the message to her so that they will come so that we all sit down and reorganize the community because we need to organize the place you know like earlier we were talking to the assemblyman you see all this place untidy look at this place you know I've worked around, you know, East Lagon, around uh, Lumumba Street and those sort of place. You can't drop a piece of pure water rubber on the ground. At least small boy will tell you, please pick it. And you need to pick it. But here, everybody don't care. You just throw rubbish around the place. And she, I told her, point blank, face to face, that, you know, she has a yeoman's work to do in the community because you need to educate the members of the community as to handle the situation in it. Because if you don't do it, who will do it for you? Yes. Because when you go to East Legon, it is by themselves, though the government has laid all the structures for them, I think they are watchmen for themselves. Yes. But here, <laughs> if you do it, somebody will tell you, oh, Papa dear. You know, why do you carry it on your shoulders? Mm. Yes, but that does not deter us from, you know, warning people from doing what is wrong in the system. Because at the end of the day, it is you who will suffer. It is not the president. Now, now, talking of suffering, how has all of this, the poor sanitation in the area, how has it affected community members in terms of health specifically? A lot. A lot. We have waterborne diseases, like dysentery. We have, you know, a... Uh, uh, diarrhea, we have uh, typhoid, we have malaria because you know stagnant waters breeds mosquitoes. And at night, my brother, you can stay. You have to go indoors. Yes, or you just put uh, this uh, mosquito expellent on your body. You know that's the word of the mosquitoes. But we have to, we have to do what we need to do. Keep ourselves healthy because. A healthy body contains a healthy mind. So without a healthy body, how can you think? How can you progress? How can you move forward? How can you change your, economy, your community? Finally, what do you think are the solutions, some of the solutions we ought to bring to bear to resolve these problems? One, like I've told you, the community members are also party to the solution. If you don't dump the place will not get untidy. Two, there are, though there are regulations with the sub-metro or the uh, local government people, you know, to super, you know, supervise the system so that people will not. Assuming these uh, domestic drains in front of houses, if these people, you, which people we, we used to call them saman saman, if they were to be around, you know, people will be cleaning their drains each day, you will not find waste in the drain, and you will not dump the waste anywhere, like we see now. You yourself, you, are, you can testify to it that you see waste all over the place, and it's not done by himself, it's done by the residents, who just dump things all over the place. You see that thing? So it is we who must, one, find solution to the problem, and so that the central government, through his structures or agents, can also bring help to us.
we have all these quarters here. How are you dealing with that situation? And what are the plans to, to you know, get what used to be the school back in shape, to get the school back on its feet for members of the community to benefit? Thank you very much. Uh, personally, that's what I have done. Initially, there were some land litigation issue with the ownership of the land. Let me say that uh, my good self and some of the community members, unit committee members, opinion leaders, we've tried to resolve this thing so, so far as the land issues are concerned. The squatters on the land, we've had a series of meetings with them. They are no problem at all because everybody knows it's, 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 it's a known fact that this is a school land. But you know, this is a crap for you. Any land that is not being used, definitely somebody will settle upon it. But they know that the land does not belong to them. So it depends on when we want to construct the school or when the school will be constructed. We talk to them, we eject them from the school, then we start with the construction. What we are looking for now is the, at least, uh, is the uh, walling of the school. I mean, uh, securing the place now, which we've had a series of meetings. Previously, meetings, our, meetings with whom? With the squatters on the land, I mean. We, they have their opinion leaders. We've spoken to them. They are willing to go any time that the, uh, 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 we are ready to construct the school. Like I said, we've had a series of meetings with them. Uh, previously, uh, our um, former MP, uh, he took personal interest in it. We've had a series of meetings with them. Actually, we were expecting this thing will be even be done last year because the MP assured us by even securing someone. That, that is Ahmed Atta? Yes, yeah, yes, Ahmed Atta, yeah. So if you can see, he even mounted uh, the architectural drawings uh, of the school, which we came to. So we expect that this will even be done even before last year election. Uh, unfortunately, he lost the election, but it's a position. We have a new MP and the person of Honorable Dakua Newman. Uh, last time, he called all of us, the assembly members. I tabled the priority of the school, of the community to to uh, and we are here to also make a, uh, to make a follow up as to what to be done. Is then I think we will be on the so uh, 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 on record. We don't have issues with the litigation in the community. And even if somebody is having litigation, whatever, the entire community members, this is a community land, no matter what, uh, uh, we are going to ensure that when it's going to be constructed, nobody will come and raise, quote unquote, it's or an ugly head that the land belongs to me, or it's a school land, and that is what we are protected, the, or we protected the land for. We now interact with a community opinion leader, uh, Jonathan Adi. Uh, thank you for joining the conversation. Thank you. Now, the very site we're on mm -hmm. used to belong to the Aveno Primary School, exactly. classes one to six, and many hundreds have actually passed through. In fact, some of those we've interacted with are old students of the school. Exactly. But what happened for the school to be raised to the ground? Oh, there was a time when it rained. See, the, the, the area became flooded, the school area became flooded. So the school children had to be away on Kashua Brick for about, let's say, two, three months before when the water soaks away, then they come back. So all those things were, in fact, disturbing the teachers and all these things, letting couldn't go on okay, you see. So most of the children started, the parents started taking them away from the school. So on and on, it came to a time that the school had to close down. Mm. So, so the school was brought down how many years ago? Over 10 years now, over 10 years. Mm. Mm. And, and what was the plan to, to reconstruct the school? The plan to reconstruct the school, or we, the community members, some of us, we took it upon ourselves as, as, as sometimes uh, we, the community members of, let's say, we're having a committee called, um, what do you call, Water and Sanitation Committee, which I, I was, I, I'm the secretary, and our honorable is the organizer. So, in actual fact, we, we took that particular thing ourselves that if because of water and sanitation that has brought all this thing down, then we have to reconstruct it. So, we took it upon ourselves and started on our own way. So, by going to the approaching people, officers or offices, that which we, in fact, come out to help us reconstruct it. In this, that we were able to attain these papers, the drawings and everything. By our own self, the Honorable led the whole team. And he was paying. When you say honourable, whom do you, whom are you referring to? The present, the uh, present uh, honourable, honourable AG. Mm. Yeah, the he, assemblyman. The assemblyman. He was paying the money. He paid monies for all these things to be done. Mm. So together with me and some few members, we went out. In fact, 
soliciting uh, help and all these things for that since six about six to seven years now. Now, now, now you, you mentioned, I mean, it's been quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, when you look around, you have uh, fuel tankers, you have all kinds of squatters uh, who have invaded this place. Yes. In fact, you have a building that has been constructed on what is supposed to be the site of the school. Yes. And we also have uh, right behind us, uh, you know, a cattle shed mm -hmm. where, you know, cows are feeding from troughs and all of that. Uh, have, has there been any attempt to deal with that situation? Where, how are you going to construct the school when all these people are here? Thank you very much. We, 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 we've made a move by consulting the meeting them several times. We educated them about how they have to move away, the way they should go. And even we are coming back again to what? We construct the school because the community is, uh, is in need of the school. So they, 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 all, they understood what we, we, we said. And now, any time, that we are already, we are ready to, in fact, evacuate them, they will go. They are ready. Nobody sold this place to them. They came by themselves. They are all squatters. So when any time that we talk to them, they themselves, they know. They can't do anything. And now what we did presently now is, in fact, the, um, uh, the members we have, our leaders, something like the MPs and this thing, they have to come in now. Because we don't need any, 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 any help from any place. They are in the community with us. And then sometimes they are the people who at least get something small, small from the government in assistance for the communities. So if for we in Aveno, we don't have our share, then where do we lie? So we want, we want them now. We are, in fact, this time of year, this time around, we are going to put a pressure on the MP. Because, so Dakwa Newman. Yes. She, she, she has to get prepared. We are coming with good pressure on here so that this school is reconstructed early. And that is the real story. The other day, it was Shukura Bola Junction in the Ablekuma Central constituency. Today, it is Aveno in the Okaikwe South constituency. Community by community, constituency by constituency, we are laying bare the crucial problems affecting community members. From poor drainage systems, to sanitation, to a dilapidated school that was raised to the ground, these are some of the major issues affecting the people of Aveno, right here in the Okaikwe South constituency. Bit by bit, we're striving for change. From Aveno in the Okaikwe South constituency, Benjamin Akako for Joy News.